What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview where every single week. I interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, and strip top badasses that they're dominating their space. They're people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others. And today, guys, we've got an amazing rock star guest here on the show. Our guest today, you guys, has been the number one agent in Philadelphia every single year since 1988. So 32 years straight, which I can't even fathom. That's some insane consistency. And I'm so excited to, to dive in and pick his brain on all the changes and, and the way he's been able to adapt to technology changes, to market changes. Um, but also, you guys, he and his team have sold over 10,000 homes have over 500 plus five-star reviews, over $2 billion sold, um, and are just continued to continue to grow and continue crushing it. So I'm really stoked and honored to have Michael McCann here on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, I am not Michael McCann. I am Mike McCann. The yeah, Mike McCann, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, I got called out in the last uh, last podcast that he's like, nobody I can't, it wasn't his name wasn't michael but he's like the only person that calls by the full name other than, than joshua smith is my mother <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly yeah, yeah. Exactly. and i'm from philly <laughs> yep. love it man so uh you know before we get into all the things that you're doing today and and as well as the, your journey that that's led up to this i'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them to the real estate industry in the first place if we're on the clocks like how'd you get into real estate what would you do prior and how, how did this whole journey begin for you Gotcha. Um, it's a great question and it really is uh, part of my success and very important. But first of all, you're one of the few blogs I listen to in my car all the time, just so you know that. Um, anyway, um, so I'm honored to be on here. Yeah, that means a lot. Honored to have you. Yeah, the, 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 the story with me is right from humble roots and um, grow, growing up, uh, we, we didn't have a lot. And my friend's parents bought the mini bikes. And I wanted a mini bike, so at eight I started to work, and I saved up and I got a mini bike at ten, and I bought that mini bike myself. And no one took care of their mini bike or enjoyed their mini bike more than me. So I learned from a real early age, out of necessity, that um, hard work and results is not just success; it's joy. I enjoyed that stuff more. So. Um, and then that proceeded in my life. I was in the restaurant business through high school, and, but I never knew what I wanted to do. And I used to say to my mom, I said, mom, I wish I had a job where the harder you worked, the more money you could make. Because I was always the hardest worker. I never complained. I, 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 by working hard and doing a good job, it gave me joy and I always had fun. I worked in the sewers, I worked in the restaurant business. I sold vacuum cleaners door to door for three and a half years, $650 vacuum cleaners in 79 to 82. Um, so I, I've done it all, but, um, but I never knew really what I wanted to do. The vacuum cleaners taught me entrepreneurship and that was a mentor, James P. Marion III, who taught me a lot of the sayings and, and that I have today where never, never give up, the harder you work, the luckier you can get, um, the persistent overcomes resistant, can't means won't, um, if you believe you can achieve. All those things I learned at 19, 20, 21, selling $650 vacuum cleaners when interest rates were 21%, and there was no jobs, and we were, uh, the country was a nightmare. Um, but I never knew what I wanted to do. So um, after my uh, vacuum cleaner career, kind of burnt out, I opened up with a partner, and, and, and he wasn't honest. So I went back into the hotel business, and I'm 25, 26. And I'm in the hotel business and I'm like, what am I going to do? I was the third highest paid in the hotel because I was doing like multiple jobs, but I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And a couple of friends said, hey, Michael, we're going to invest in real estate. This was about 85 because interest rates went down from like 18% to like 12% and the market took off. So a couple of friends were like, we're going to invest in real estate. I said, I don't work for my dad. I don't have your money. I can't do that. My friend said, Michael, just take a course. I took the course and as soon as I, in two minutes, I'm like, you can make commissions selling real estate. Oh my God, I sold $650 vacuum cleaners. And that was it. June of 86 was when I said, I'm going to sell real estate. And um, for the first year and a half, I was still in the hotel business selling real estate. 
In 88, I retired the hotel business and I sold 90 properties in 1988 myself, no conveyance or no mortgage company, no in-house support. Um, so that, that was how I got into real estate. Yeah, man, I love that. And, <laughs> and, yeah, I can't even fathom that many deals. You know, I got into business in 2005, you know, right? And that was pre-DocuSign, pre-smartphones. And you know, I did 48 deals that year. And, and man, that was a challenge. It was like every deal was kind of, it was like, to do one deal was the equivalent of maybe two today with, you know, all of, all of the technology advancements. And I can't even, as a solo agent, you said 80 plus transactions. That I did 90 transactions in 1988 and I'm, we're talking no in-house mortgage, no in-house title, no conveyance, or I had to clear titles. I had to order the search. I had to do payoffs. Do I was working 12, 14 hour days. The crazy thing is, my average price at that point, my average price today is about five twenty-five. My average price then was forty-three thousand dollars. So I did ninety transactions, three point five million. You got fifty percent commission back in those days, so I made forty-five thousand dollars. Nineteen eighty-eight was still decent money, but for twelve, fourteen-hour days, insane. Um, and yes, there was no. I don't want to sound too old, you know, just a. a 1988 makes me old. My, my wife says I got to stop talking about the 80s. But when I got in, you know, you had the old MLS books. There was no internet. Um, there, the industry has changed. The industry is so much easier today. Um, so It is so much faster. The change has been unbelievable. So I went from a printed book to helping our board get on the uh, computerized multiple listing to then watching the Zillow and Trillion Realtor.com come out you know, all, all the podcasts, all the, the internet stuff. So I've seen a big, big change in the industry. But I will tell you, right now is, I'd say the biggest change was from, there was no internet to the internet was going to now have all our listings. And the National Association of Realtors and everybody was freaked out. Oh my goodness, we're going to go the way of the travel agent. They're not going to need us. Well, and they were scared. But the beauty about that is now the buyers, instead of going out five or 10 times and looking at the houses, they pretty much screen them. You show the buyers five houses now because they make their decision. They use you more now today than they ever did, but they do their own due diligence and then they come to you as the professional. So it is so much easier today. Um, and right, then uh, DocuSign changed my life. I mean, I get an offer at six and by seven it's signed and returned. I used to run around nine, 10, 11 at night getting papers signed up and, you know, uh, forget about the facts. I was in before the facts. You couldn't even, you know, those things would blow up on the fax machine. So the industry's changed, but it's changing now as much now today, I believe. And that's why I made a switch from being with Prudential Berkshire for 27 years to Keller Williams a year ago. Uh, I was with Berkshire for 27 years credential for 27 years, but I've seen the industry changing over the last three or four or five years, big time. And, and, and then I saw the leader and Gary Keller fighting for the realtors to remain in control and competing with the Zillows and the Redfins who have great systems. Um, and so I, I switched because I see the biggest change occurring now, artificial intelligence, the Zillows, the realtor.coms, the wall street money coming in, and Gary's fighting, just like me, to remain the pertinent part of the real estate transaction. Um, and I know what I do, no one's going to replace me. I mean, I am a very important person in the people's lives from soup to nuts on the transaction. So you ask me a question and I give you these long answers. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it, man. And, and it, I just, I love your energy and your, your passion about just about the industry, man. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, right? So... I'm curious in those, those first, you know, few years or, or really, I mean, within two years, you went from being brand new to the, having that 90 deal year. And you talked about, okay, hey, I'm working 14, 12, 14 hour days. But I mean, that, those first few years, the average agent, 90% don't make it in those first few years. Absolutely. You know, right. And a lot of them, it's, I mean, they're out there working hard, but maybe they're just working, they're working hard on the wrong things. And what, what were you doing those, those first couple critical years to have those kind of results that you had? Yeah, real estate is the greatest business in the world. If you have a, a sincere desire to do whatever it takes. 
And whatever it takes means doing what's best for the customer first. So what I decided early on, and this was the key, when I got into business, I thought, wow, everybody cooperates. There's a listing agent and a selling agent. So I want to have the best reputation in the marketplace, not just among the clients, but among the real estate community. That's one. Two, I want to be the most knowledgeable. So unlike other people back in the 80s, I continued to take courses every semester at Temple Real Estate Institute. I got my CRS, Certified Residential Specialist, GRI. I was one of the very few people that continued to educate. So I wanted to become the most knowledgeable in the marketplace. And then I wanted to be um, uh, knowledge, uh, uh, reputation, and, um, and cooperation. I want it to be that if I have a listing, you want to show my listing. If I bring you an offer, you want to close my deal because I'm working with you. I'm helping you. We are not competitors. We're team players. Yes, you represent your client. I represent mine. But nothing is better in a real estate transaction having two intelligent, diligent, conscientious, hardworking realtors. So, so that was one of the key things. The second thing was because I sold vacuum cleaners door to door, I made flyers, walked up and down the street, handing out flyers. Um, also, and I tell people today getting into business, you can make the top one, two percent in the country in income, two to three, four years in the business. The first year, you'll be lucky if you can feed yourself. So you need to have a reserve. So I under promise new agents and try to over deliver, but I let them know first six months, you'll be lucky if you make anything. So we put them on rentals to get a little bit of income to learn how to use the computer and, and do stuff. Um, but you have to get out there. So most people sit there and they say, I'm working so hard. And I say to them, how many showings did you have this week? Oh, I had one. So you've been working so hard all week. You had one showing all week. No matter how good you are, you're not going to close many deals with one showing. So you got to get in front of the client. You can't sit on social media. You can't sit in just training classes. You have to get out on the street, the coffee shop. So I was just constantly saying hello to people at my kid's school and just letting them know what, what I, what I did and handing out flyers door to, uh, you know, door to door on the streets. Yeah. Love it. Powerful stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's with, with the internet technology, it's a love and a curse at the same time. You know, I, I always reflect back when, again, getting visit 2005, well, YouTube didn't exist. There weren't podcasts, which I love all of that now because we can learn from it, but I also feel lucky to not have had that distraction. Absolutely. I'm glad I didn't have it as a kid, man. I, I loved our yeah. freedom, man. We had nothing, but, but, it, but it's funny. So I listen to your podcast. I'll be in my car. If I'm going to be a 30 minute drive, I will listen to your podcast. Like, like that's when I'll, I'll do stuff. Um, I, you know, I go on uh, Instagram and Facebook and that's, I'll go on 10 or 15 minutes. And, and, and then of course I'm posting on that stuff. So I'm engaged, but I'm not going to sit there for an hour or two hours. Um, my goal is to have at least three appointments a day. I like to have a 915, a 1215, a 315, and a 515. And in between, I'm returning all my emails, texts, um, messages. Um, one of the key things that, that I found early on was, and I was probably, I had my first assistant in 89. There was no such thing as buyer agency. No one had teams. There were no assistants. But I went from a control freak to the king of delegation. They said, I took a course, and there's this guy, Alan Dom. He's the number one real estate guy in the uh, country, and he's a condo king specialist, and he's in Philadelphia. And I took a course at Temple, and he said, Mike, he said, if you don't have an assistant, you are an assistant. If you can pay someone less to do what you don't want to do and what you don't need to do, you should do that. So I saved up money. And again, I'm making 45000 bucks a year. I have a wife and two children. I hired three, I saved three months of pay and I hired someone in 89 and I said, listen, I'm an independent entrepreneur. I live on commissions. I have three months of your pay. If this doesn't work out, your job's over in three months. If it does, then you have a, you have a job here. So I made up, check, my wife helped me make up checklists. We made up checklists, brought this assistant in and within three weeks, I was, I was weird the first couple of weeks. I had systems going for that assistant. And that year I made an the following year, I made an extra $40,000. So I tell people, if you're doing two and a half million in business, 
get three months of reserve and hire an assistant. Forget about buyer's agents. Forget about building this team. Hot. Any key CEO has a great support person. So all my friends said, Mike, you're a control freak. You'll never be able to live. And, 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 but I learned how to delegate. Yet I'm involved in every transaction. I'm just the air traffic controller. Like I have support people. So today, uh, 92, I hired my second assistant. It wasn't until buyer agency came out around 95 or 96 that I hired my first buyer specialist. And I only hired that person after I had two full-time assistants. And I was doing, I, uh, 96, I was probably doing 200 deals a year, 150, 200 deals a year myself. Um, and and then, I, then I hired a buyer's agent in 96 because I thought, I don't want to work weekends. So I hired a buyer's agent and they started handling my buyers. Ones I wouldn't have been able to handle because I'm too busy. And they started working Saturdays. So I stopped working Saturdays in 96. And by 99, I hired another, assist, another agent. I stopped working Sundays. So my success, you know, I'd say back to 2000, to between six and 800 transactions a year has always been not working Saturday, not meeting clients Saturdays and Sundays. I can't say not working. I'm on the phone. I'm negotiating, you know, stuff like that. Um, so building slow and steady. And I've also, I'm rambling, I'm sorry, but I've also seen people come up and down in this industry. You know, I sell $50,000 properties and 3 million and everything in between. I never let go of my blue collar environment. I never, uh, and I've grown into the luxury environment the last 20 some years. And when the market shifts, there's different times where the luxury market dies or the condo market dies. I, I've never let go of my cops, firemen, teacher. So that's a beauty about Philadelphia. We're a city of neighborhoods and I sell homes from really from 150 to 3 million, averages around five. In our office, the average is about 350 because we do a lot of millennials. There's a, we're, we're a big millennial population. Philly's a young city now. It used to be an old city when, when I was growing up, it was an old city. Now it's the, the meds and eds, the, the millennial, the expansion. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunities in Philadelphia for young people. So. I'd say about 60% of our market is the millennial population, and I love them. Single females, 33%. Single males, about 11%. And 42% couples with no children. I'm in a downtown environment. I'm not like in the suburbs. I am in Center City, uh, the Liberty Bell, birthplace of America, Independence Hall. Um, it's just an urban environment with a uh, city of neighborhoods and restaurants, walkable, friendly. It's awesome. Yeah, love that man. And and you know, I mean, you said something so powerful there, and I want to make sure our listeners uh, uh, followed that and paid attention to it, because so many of us, I think, when you're watching the media, it's easy to get up in this. Oh, the market's good, the market's bad, but because you, like you mentioned, you have your clientele, you're you're serving a, a, a range where it's like, look, there's no such thing as a bad market. It's identifying whom is it good for. And switching your energy and attention to those where you can shift and adapt. And that's how you stayed number one in your market for 32 plus years, you know, right? Just being able to adapt. That's a, that, I mean, that is an absolute great, great point. Um, you know, the, it's funny, these last, this last 30, 45 days, we're experienced the best activity in two years. You know, we, 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 the market came out of that 2012, 13 was a little better, 14 was a little better. 15 was pretty good. 16 and 17 were insane. 18, we started to level 19. Level means we only went up three to 5% versus 10 or 15%. Yeah. But it was, it was flat the last year. Sales were actually down in our city, not prices, sales were down about 16%. And that's because of the lack of inventory. Um, but all of a sudden, uh, more inventory is hitting the market. And the activity is insane. So these last 30 days, the best I've seen in two years. I mean, rates at 3.6%. Uh, we need more inventory. That's people are staying longer. You know, that's why I love about um, uh, Philadelphia with the millennials. They come in, they'll buy, they'll stay three, five years. Then they'll maybe get married, sell that house and buy another one uh, or have children move to the suburbs. Um, it's a lot of turnover. And then also a big segment of my population is uh, small investors, developers. So that would be fixing up neighborhoods, fixing up a house, paying 150 for a house, putting 100 into it, selling it for 450, uh, buying an old warehouse, taking it down, building six new houses. So learning how that's a niche market, 
We sell more million dollar homes than anybody in Philadelphia, more million plus homes. And a lot of that is from developers that I've been working since 05, since 06. They were doing little rehabs and they've, we've made that, helped them to be successful on how to build things, what to build, where to build, sold it to them properly, and they've grown. And so I have people that buy, that buy or sell 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 homes a year from me. And that's a great repeat business than just the homeowners. Uh, that allows me to do the numbers that I do. And so we've made them successful. They've made us successful. I always say one in one is three. Uh, um, you know, you don't, my builders don't need me. I don't need them. But together, we add up to not two. We add up to three. I tell them the colors, materials. I work with them on layout. I make sure they buy right. And then when I'm marketing it, I make sure I get top dollar and, and work it hard. So that's a very exciting uh, thing in in our area. We've had neighborhoods that were run down 10 years ago now that are bubbling over and, and, and it's great transforming neighborhoods. Yeah. Love it, man. So I'm, I'm really curious with, cause you've had to adapt and shift to a lot of things throughout your career. You know, like you mentioned, I mean, there's from the books to, to the online MLS to, you know, I mean, from experience, multiple recessions, you've experienced 20 plus percent interest rates. You've, Right. And each one of those, you, you have to shift, adapt, sometimes reinvent ourselves. Um, and a lot of people, I think, just shut down. You know, I saw this in Phoenix, Arizona during, you know, 2008, when our, our markets, I mean, it, 90 plus percent of our inventory was REO short sales, right? I mean, we just, you know, we're one of the hardest hit places in the country. And you just saw so yeah. many people freeze up, not, not even be able to think clearly in those moments. And I'm, I'm really curious about like, what is your process, your mental framework, if you will, during these changes to look of, instead of shutting down out of fear, how do you look for the opportunity and, and you know, what does that look like for you? Okay. So, and, and one is, is I always save first. So just for example, and I've been through three major downturns, but I'll talk about the most recent one in 08, the end of 08, our market started to really soften dramatically. And then say, oh, nine, things weren't happening. So agents start leaving the business. Companies start laying off. Everybody's, you know, was, was going nuts. People aren't getting jobs. Um, so what I did is I stood in front of my team, my assistants. I said, we're not laying anybody off. We're not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, how many mailings are we doing a month? Well, Mike, we're doing about 3,000. Let's triple it. How, and I, back then I was buying Zillow and Realtor.com and Trillia. Uh, how much are we doing here? Okay, let's double it. So when the downturn, everybody cuts back, I invest more. And what happens is you can go through two, three, four, five years of a downturn. And when that market comes back, you, get, you catapult to the top. So did I make as much in uh, nine or 10 as I did in 05 or 06? No. Did I still make more and my agents make more than 97% of the American population? Absolutely. But we save first um, and, and then all our clients in a downturn, if it's not the best time for them to sell, unless they have to sell, we, we don't, um, we, we tell them not to sell, but we will rent them out and hold them until the market comes back. Um, the builders, there's still opportunities. In a bad market, you can get a lot of deals. I, most people who made big wealth in short periods of time made it in the downturn. Um, so in a downturn, my wealthier people can buy more, can buy stuff at 50%. Uh, the worst downturn I ever saw, worst in 08, was 1990 to 1994. Every major firm in Philadelphia closed, real estate firm. That they started the RTC, Resolution Trust Corporation. Our values were down 50%. And it didn't come back for about seven years. But the stuff that we bought then is worth a thousand percent more than today. Um, but nobody wanted to touch real estate. That was a bad downturn. 08, 09 was a bad downturn too. I know your, your area was down 50%. Ours was down about 15 to 30%. Um, but it was a bad time. Um, and in a good time, anybody can sell. So basically is you, you do what's best for the client. You help everybody. And in a downturn, you just don't get, you, maybe you're not going to make as much money, but you can make a great living because there's less people. 
Right now, the industry is probably at an all-time high with the number of people. And you have somebody, you know, people coming in doing five or six deals. But if you have a couple hundred thousand of them, and even though they might leave in two years, that takes, that takes away. I see the future, you know, being, you know, the, the, the team, the systems, doing more transactions with less players. Right now we're at an all-time high, but with all this technology and support and the demand of the customer, you need, you can't just list the property and put it in the multiple listing, you know? So, so th that's the one thing I see, but save your money, invest in your business. You know, 30% should go 30, 35% should go back into your business. 30, 35% should be profit. And, uh, uh, and then 30% should be what you're spending to run your business. Like I, I spend money to run my business. We invest in ourselves in training every year, uh, not every year, every couple, every month, um, we're constantly training. So something just showed up on my computer. Um, can you see me okay? Yep, yep, I can okay. see you great. Yep, no, okay. that's awesome. Sorry, I'm rambling again. No, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, because history always repeats itself, you know, right? And then there's kind of frameworks and fundamentals of, of, the, of successful people like yourself that we can all learn from and prepare for the next one. It's, it's like Warren Buffett, you know, his, his famous quote, when the tide goes out, you see who's skinny dipping. Right. And, and he's like, <laughs> I love you, know, you get, you gotta be patient. And he goes, do the opposite of everybody else. You know, right. When everybody's selling, that's when you jump in and buy. And as you mentioned, when everybody's canceling their marketing, well, you're able to invest more marketing at a discount. They're letting go of staff. You're able to hire talented staff at a discount. Like you're able, you're, you're putting yourself in a position to do what your competitors can't do. So you can do the opposite. Um, but with that being said, man, I mean, you've got to be disciplined, right? And you, and you said this Absolutely. earlier of being patient and we're in this instant gratification, Amazon six minute abs world, like everybody wants immediate success. And, and you've talked a lot about like, it takes time and being consistent and disciplined. And can you speak to that a little bit more just for, you know, cause it, it scares me with all the impatient entrepreneurs out there. Yeah. I have, a, I have a, a thing I should show it to you, but it's, it's, it's on my uh, wall here that we call them mechanisms. These are silly sayings that, I've, that I do. And, and one is patient persistence overcomes resistance. I'm just, I'm just going to read off a couple of things real quick that, that are silly mechanisms that I got from my, when I was selling vacuums, but never, never, never give up. Can't means won't. I can't do that. No, that means you won't do that. Uh, under promise and over deliver. Um, if you believe you can achieve, I mean, I said when I was 12 years old, 10 years old, I was going to be a millionaire. I never knew what I wanted to do. I said that through high school. I said, my friends used to laugh at me. Everybody used to laugh at me. But you know what? I didn't have anything and I knew what that felt like. And I knew I didn't want to feel like that the rest of my life. And thank goodness at 27, I found real estate. And, and then I took a course from Alan Dom that said, and this is the best advice I can give people to is, we make money in real estate, we make a living, you build wealth owning real estate. So my goal was to always buy one or two properties a year so that when I was 50 and I would get shorter term mortgages, I would have 50 properties and they'd be paid off. And then if you want to work, you didn't have to. But if you love what you do, you're going to always work, which is, which is what I do. Um, so, um, so sorry, I rambled on that. So consistency, yes, I'm very consistent. I wake up in the morning, uh, uh, my day is very consistent. I wake up in the morning. I have coffee with my wife in bed for about 45 minutes. That's our quality time. There's no stress in the environment. That's about 6.15. I'm not a 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not, man. I talk to her. 45 minutes, we connect. Then I get up, take a hot tub, uh, 10 minutes, um, clear my email. Then I take a shower, uh, uh, thank God. I'm grateful every day. I talk to God in the shower every morning and then I'm out of the house about 8, 15, 8, 20. And I'm on my first appointment, nine or nine, 15. And then I have, a, uh, and then I'll do that appointment. I'll get out. I'll return calls. I'll do another appointment. And that's throughout the day. I usually get home today, you know, back before doc, dot, DocuSign or dot loop, I would be out I do a listing at five, five thirty. I do a listing at seven, seven thirty. I'd run around, get things signed. I wouldn't be getting home till ten, eleven at night. Now, I'm usually home about eight, about eight o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday, eight, eight fifteen. Um, come in, unload my stuff, um, give my wife's my bookkeeper, throw stuff on her desk or whatever. 
get organized for the day, put my clothes out, come down, hang out with her for two hours. We'll talk. I'll eat my dinner, watch some Netflix. She goes up at 10. Then from 10 to midnight, I'm on the phone uh, following up on stuff. And then it starts over again. Uh, and that's the way that I am. That's the way that I am. But I, I'm prepared the night before for the following day. I was prepared for this interview. I, was prepared. I already had a settlement today. I had a, um, a, a, a listing appointment this morning and a couple running around getting some descriptions, checking some properties. But I've already had a pretty active day. When I'm done here, I have another person coming in. Then I have a listing appointment and then I'll go to the gym and then I'll be home tonight, probably 7.30 tonight. Um, but I'm very consistent and the key to success is everyone, no one can believe, wow, you call back so fast. Oh, wow. Like I, I tell everybody, I'm two minutes to two hours normally in responding. And that's important. Everybody's important to me. Um, oh, and just one more thing I'm going to jump into is that one of the key things I'm proud of that I enjoy today is growing people. But if you, my team now has grown. So I have seven full-time support staff three of which have been with me between 15 and 23 years. I have, um, I had 19 agents when I came to Keller last year. I have 26 now, but, but of my agents, more than 10 of them have been with me between 10 and 20 years. We're, we have a little thing over here. Um, that's a hotel California. It's an, it's an album that says, um, uh, I don't know if you can see it over here, but whatever it's, um, yeah, it's, it's over there in the corner right there. It's, it says, it's such a lovely place, it's that song, it's such a lovely place, but you can never leave. One of the proudest things I have is my people stay with me for life. And, and, and building, it's a team, it's family first, it's family, hard work, you know, and growth. I mean, that's really what, what we are. And so people come here for life and I love making them successful, both financially and personally. Um, so what was your question? I'm sorry, yeah, man. No, I mean, it was, it was about the, just the, the, the patience, the, just the consistency, the patience. And, you know, it sounds to me like one of the reasons that you're such a successful team leader and your people stay with you so long is you're leading by example. You're not That's pointing cool. saying, do this. Like, you, you know, you're, you're out there hustling. I mean, they're, they're watching you truly lead by example, which always make the best leaders. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the, I love the real estate business. So I'm not a team leader that has all these people doing production and I'm not in production. I am out doing it. They follow me, I, I help them, but, but I, I love, you know, I personally am doing about 150 transactions a year myself, you know, listing and negotiating and dealing with that. And then my, my, you know, then my team, I think we did 800 last year. We're going to do a thousand this year. It's going to be my best year, our, our best year ever. Um, since we came to Cal, our systems are better than they've ever been. Um, and we we're, we're really organized and we're really looking forward to slow and steady growth. That's the one. That's how I raise my builders. That's how I raise my agents. Every year you're going to do better. In my 32 years, I would say every year, except for three or four, did I not do better than the year before? And normally it's real. In your early years, sometimes you can do 30% better, but it's, I'm normally 10, 15, 20% better each year. And it, when the market collapses and the market goes down 40%, I might go down 10%. I'm always better than the market, um, but slow and steady. And nobody can take me out of this business. I, I am self-employed. The market can't take me out when interest rates were crazy. I was still selling real estate. Um, when, you know, no one, there's more of a need. When the market changes, there's more of a need for an experienced professional. Um, you just have to develop system. You have to be consistent. You have to sh get dressed and show up in the office. Whether you have an appointment or not, show up in the office at 9 a.m. If you're not showing up in the office at 9 a.m., you're not in the business. You need to be around that environment. You need to take classes. You need to get appointments. Um, and just, if, if you have the more face-to-face, -face, the more sales you're going to make, the more listings you're going to get. That's a, when someone contacts me, the first thing, I don't go into this 20 minute conversation. When are you typically available? Morning, afternoon, or evening? Oh, well, I get home about seven. Great, I'll see you 7.15, how is tomorrow night? Oh, okay, well, well, Mike, we're not sure we're gonna, that's okay, don't worry about it. I just wanna come out, meet with you, take a look. And once you develop that face-to-face -face and people see that you care about them and that you're knowledgeable, you can move mountains. 
most of my transactions aren't hand fed transactions. They are ways that I see what their goals are. And then I find ways to accomplish those goals. And then I carry them. I am the confidence man. I am the person that for those three, six months, I'm one of the most important people in their lives. And, and I'm going to really under promise, over deliver, but deliver. You know, uh, I don't disappear and, and not deliver. You have to deliver. Anyway, yeah. I'm rambling again. <laughs> no, I love it, man. It's awesome stuff. And, and, you know, we have so many today and I, and I know that it gets harder because of, of technology and it's easier to be distracted, but so many are looking for that, that magic pill, that shiny penny, you know, right. What, what would you say, you know, right. For those when, when it comes to what it, what it truly takes to create success, you know, like you talked about showing up each day, right. Being consistent, getting face to face, belly to belly, if you will, you know, what, what would you say to those that are looking for the, the magical lead source or the magical script or whatever it may be? Yeah, there, there's, you, what you have to do is you have to take two or three things. From, in fact, you have to take two or three things and work those. And you have to see what works best. In my early days, I was the king of expired. No one knew who I was. I would show up at that door, knock. They weren't home, leave something in there try to get that listing, um, open houses. I would sit those consistently Saturdays and Sundays to try to get buyers. And then I would build off of that success. So today, um, I would have a good, you know, good social, social, what, what's beautiful, beautiful about, um, Instagram and Facebook is it's free, you know, before, um, but I do a ton of mailings. I have, I have consistent mailings that go out to my marketplaces. Um, I still do ads in the paper. I have a good Facebook, a good Instagram, but you need to come up with two or three um, lead sources and niches. If I'm a new agent, I'm going to go to the, a good agent in the office and I'm saying, listen, can I sit your open houses? I have developed hundreds of agents, not on my team, within my company over the years that became very successful their first couple of years because I said, you seem like a good guy. This is how I want you to do my open houses and letting them do open houses. They capture leads and they start to capture listings. And in a year or two, they don't need to set my open houses because they have their own business. So that's what I call your open store. So if, if, you, if I, an agent comes to me and they sit my open house and it's in Society Hill, they post that on Instagram, they post that on Facebook, they hand out some flyers. They're in Society Hill, they're a brand new agent, they got a great listing. So they become a spec, but they have to consistently do it. So most agents will do open houses for a couple of weeks. They won't capture any leads or any buyers because they're new and then they'll give up. So patient persistence overcomes resistance. Um, then after you start to be a, busier, that's when you have to hire a support person to do, to help you, not do, to help you with your social media, your mail. So um, I just started the 33 touch system a year ago reaching out to my clients. I never followed up on my clients other than a 4th of July card, a Thanksgiving card, but I never would call them up or and now we're doing, I'm doing client appreciation parties. I'm doing more of that so I can go off of Zillow, Trillium, Realtor.com. So I was one of the early people that went on Realtor.com and then I bought Zillow and the leads were great. And now they've diminished and the prices have gone up and, and I, I want to get away from that and I'm working on getting away from that. So we've implemented some more systems, but every, what I always say, every quarter, you need to do one or two things and you slow and steady. If people, you know, people go to college and they spend all this money to go to college and I didn't go to college. I had a scholarship, but I, I needed to make money. I couldn't do it. Um, if they spend four years in this business, they'll, they'll and, and, or two years in this business working like you have to do when you're in college, you would never leave. But most people want to get rich quick. This is not, you're being, I tell people, you're lucky if you make 35 or 40,000 your first year. Your second year, you make 90,000. But by your third year, you can make multiple six figures. And, and that's really the goal. If you love people, you have to love people. You have to be able to, you have to be a confidence builder. How do you get confidence? By knowledge. If you're knowledgeable and I know what to do, I can confidently tell you what to do. If I don't know what to do, I can't be confident. So we're confidence builders. I carry people. 
Yeah, love it, man. Powerful stuff. And then I'm, I'm curious with 60% of, of your new business that's coming in being millennials. Yes. Today, is there anything different uh, that you guys do to capture that millennial business or where that business is coming from? If somebody's like, hey, I really want to target millennials, maybe they're a millennial, want to target them. You know, is there any, is it all the same stuff or is there different stuff that yeah, you do? Well, yeah, well, yeah, they're, they're, um, the key thing is, is what's great. I, I love the millennials. And of course, I'm 60. I, there's four or five of us that are 50 to 60. But between 20, 24 and 35, I have about 10 people on my team. So I have a lot of millennials because it's now my kids, you know, I, I'm not only the father's age, I could be their grandfather's age. I love millennials and I hit it off great with them and I still work with them great, but I have a lot of millennial agents and what's happened is they're working their database from their college, from their school. They sell to one friend, they end up with five or six or eight. So where we are in Philadelphia, a lot of them grew up in the suburbs, but they've moved to the city and they're renting. They got their job. They're 25, 26. They're paying a thousand, two thousand dollars a month rent. And then they're here a couple of years and they want to buy a small house. And their first house might be two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. Um, so once you sell one, it's a domino effect. Three or four of their friends want to buy. Um, so we get a lot from working that database. We just did a first time home buyer seminar in our office, which we had six people. Uh, work with us right away. We had like 15 people come and six people signed up with us right away. We work our tenant database. So we ran about, two, uh, in addition to those sales, I ran about 241 properties last year. Everyone has a lease that's coming up. We let them know for what you're paying for rent, you can own. And this is what your cost is. And we can get you in with FAJ or with seller assist with minimum. This is what it will cost you. And and then we have the, this chart that shows that people who own versus people who rent over time, people who own are, their nets like 250,000, people who, who rent their nets like 5,000 over time. It's a, it's a chart that we have. Um, and, and, and there's nothing more joyful than your first. My first home was a $43,000 house in South Philadelphia. And guess what? It was one of the best memories I ever, ever had. Um, so, so that group, is great to work with. And what I love about them is they, they do their own due diligence um, and then they come to you for direction and they're great to work with. And so you're like the air traffic controller. You direct them through, but they already know what's on the market, what they like. They have impeccable taste. You know, back in our day, we were all buying fixer uppers, paneling and drop ceilings. No, man, they want complete, beautiful new stuff um, and they pay for it but that's why rates are so low. They can afford more. Um, so, the, so that's where we work. The millennial is from the rental market. People who are currently renting people from your, the high schools and, um, and the, the, the other millennials with the high school with or college with. Yeah. Love it. Powerful stuff, man. So then, yeah, you know, I'm curious, you talked about this earlier uh, at the beginning of the podcast, and, and which, which led to your recent switch to Keller Williams um, because of all the changes right now and seeing more changes as you mentioned, than any other time in your career that are taking place now, what are other things? Because it sounds like you're already being proactive with this big change and other things that you're doing. What are things that you are, are doing or focusing on right now to uh, uh, adapt to, you know, the changes that are, that we continue to see and that are coming? Yeah. Um, uh, this, I, um, again, I, I was with Prudential for 27 years and I love them. And it was my family. I never would have left. But the changes that I see with Zillow, with Redfin, and with artificial intelligence on the way, I listened to 10 blogs from Gary Keller. And even though I fought the growth of Keller over the last 10 years, um, I bought into that. So um, artificial intelligence and owning the systems. You know, I pay vendors. I used to pay vendors. And I do pay and there's Zillow, and I, but they have my information. Gary spent a billion dollars investing in command, and, and we're learning that now to have all the tools. The artificial intelligence is, the, is the, one of the biggest changes that I'm seeing. And then also, um, it, like they have, it, the Keller system has a whole plan, this 33-touch system, the training, 
it was basically, Keller Williams initially was a recruiting company, then it became an education company, now it's a technology company. Yes. And, and I fought it up until I realized next five, 10, 20, 30 years, I need to be with somebody that's invested into the future of owning this stuff. When I cut down Zillow, my leads go away. With this, with Command and Kelly, our artificial intelligence, we own all the stuff and we spend a billion dollars. So now we're in training doing that. Um, and it's, um, it's already unbelievable. But so I had to move my team. Like when you have a child, all of a sudden, your life is no longer the most important thing. Your child's life is the most important thing. So I have a bunch of young people, 20s and 30s and 40s, that work for me. And I thought, where's the best place for them to be over the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years? And it was with Keller. And that is because of artificial intelligence and the systems that we own it, not buying it. So, so my, comp my team has grown dramatically the last one. We've been here one year now, last one year, and we anticipate growing a, a lot more. And it's basically with systems. I mean, he, they have books, the uh, millionaire real estate agent and, and um, the one thing, so many things. Like, I feel like I'm brand new in the business. I feel like I've done it all wrong. Not, not all wrong. He, they have a lot of my same values, but my, my systems are nothing like what they have here. If I was a brand new agent and I came to Cal and I followed the plan, the bold system, the millionaire real estate, I would have been a millionaire in five years. Like, like you, there is a, the support. It's just a totally different culture, but, tr but manual. If someone said, Mike, here's the manual. I went to a real estate company that didn't even sell real estate. I didn't know my first six years. They were a property management company. There was not one salesperson. So I learned everything myself. Um, and, and luckily, because of my patient persistence and never, never give up, I, and door knocking, I got through it. But I would have, my success would have been so much faster. So I have agents who are 28, 29. Their success is where I was 15 years in the business because they're following our systems now. So artificial intelligence, tech, but you can't get buried in tech. You got to meet the client. You got to get out on the appointments. Um, you got to um, uh, see the public. You can't just stay on the computer. Yeah, you know when I'm when I'm interviewing the top of the top in the industry, just just like yourself, you know, everybody talks about exactly what you just said with technology. Of you've got to be very careful to not allow technology to replace the relationship right? Technology is utilized to allow you to be more effective and efficient at developing more deeper relationships. And so many try to automate so heavily and, and they just lose that element of, of the human connection. And, you know, and that's what kind of gets scary with the industry is then it becomes a transaction based, not relational based. And then people don't, don't see the, the same value. Yes. It's, 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 a, and, and that uh, mine has always been relationship based and it's funny. And I never call anybody up and say, Hey, do you want to sell? My business has always been a business of attraction. So, and, and that's from results. So yes, I will um, do it. I sell a property. I'll send out a, a, a hundred postcards or a thousand postcards. Um, people see, uh, you know, I get on the news. Uh, I get on stuff like people see me all over. They see my signs all over Mike McCann, the real estate man. So it's by attraction. I do really good for you. You tell your friend, I get so many calls each week that like, Mike, you know, are you, I heard you're the best. You did that. Like, I don't actually solicit my, the business has come to me again. I'm learning a little bit more, a lot more on working my database. So that's one where I think that I can be weaned from realtor.com and Zillow by working my database and working my resources a little bit more um, because they all do love me and I love them. Like if I call a client up, man, they will pick the phone up or they will return the phone call right away because, and, and I might not remember their name, but if they give me the address, it could have been 20 years ago. I'll remember. I got, I went on a listing on Friday where they bought it for me in 1989. And they said, Mike, you know, this is Roy and Wilbur. It's Roy and Wilbur. You sold us our house in 89. And I'm like, 907 South 6th Street. I friggin' remember that, that address. <laughs> there, now, I, it hasn't, it, it's, it was almost, what, uh, 89, whatever, how many years ago that was, 30 some years ago. It was like I haven't left them. I was, they felt, 
they still remembered how important I was in their life. And that happens to me all the time. I love bringing my newer agents in like to meet a client who I sold 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And, and how I might not have spoken to them for 20 years, but how important I was to them and still are, are to them. So anyway, that's the joy I get about, you know, once you can feed your family and you house yourself, what's the, the, the next best thing is, is helping your clients. And then the, to me, the next best thing is, is helping the next generation. Like I had a guy in here yesterday who's from a different company. I'm giving them growth advice. I'm not asking them to join Keller. I'm not asking them to join my team. He said, Mike, I love your story. Can I spend some time with you? I said, sure. Come to my office. I'll give you 20 minutes. I spent an hour. So you need to get in the system. You did this. Like, so, I, so I help. That's the one thing. Is, is, is I, I always, I'm, nobody's a competitor of mine. I want us all to grow and be professional. There's plenty for everyone. And the more good you do, the more good that comes back to you. Yep, hundred percent. And then, would you say that the key, really, to you know, when when you mentioned that they remembered after twenty or thirty years of of how important you were to them during that time, is the key to giving them that feeling is is the importance that you put into them. I mean, making them such an important priority and, and going that above and beyond, like you mentioned, where then because they felt so important that then that allowed them to feel or see more importance in you. Absolutely. It's, it's because I care, I care about them first and then I see what their goals are. And then I help. I don't just say, yeah, get the house painted and do this. Let me bring my painter in, you know, let me, you know, with the home inspection, let me, I can help you do this. I help them in all aspects of the transaction. So I'm just not, Oh, this is the house and we'll list it for this, but you have, I'll help them get it declawed. Like, um, if they need an estate attorney, I'll, they'll use my estate attorney. They need a stucco guy. They need a roofer. They need a painter. They need a declutter. So I'm the whole process. Um, or if they're buying the property, they need issues. I have people that can help them. And all the vendors that I use are top quality, but give great prices because they get hundreds of jobs from me. So I am the whole package. It's a concierge service in a sense. If I said that word right. Um, it, it, it's um, the whole package where I, I get consumed in the process so that they know. And, and I'm always who I am. I don't talk to them any differently than I'm talking to you right now. I can't be anybody different than who I am. The bad Philly accent, you know, I'll, I'll say freaking sometimes, you know, like stuff like that. But, but, I, um, but I'm passionate about what I do. And I only tell them what I know is correct, what I know can get done. But sometimes I'll say, you know, I'm not sure I can get you this price, but if anybody can get it, I will get it and I will work it and work it and work it and work it. And then they'll see me do that. Um, So I can't do everything all the time, but, and I'll let them know that, but I'll tell them I have a chance. I can't promise you this and, and, but, and I'll persistently work it and work it. So, so it's about, yeah, it's about caring about that, about, about being important. And I know it sounds hokey, but people know when you're in it for yourself or when you're in it for them. And I love the business of real estate, but it's, it's a residential real estate is a personal business. It's a, it's a relationship business. It's not, yes, my business has to be very profit, has to be profitable. My agents have to make money. I have to be able to pay all my support staff. They have to make money, but the client is first. And the more goodwill you do for them, the more business will come to you. Yeah, amazing stuff. So one last question for you. If my, Mike today, after all your years of experience and success, could go back to the Mike when you first got into the industry, um, in it was 85, 86, to give years. yourself two pieces of advice, knowing everything that you know right now, that you two piece of advice that would have just fast forward your trajectory on the success journey that you're on knowing everything you know now today what would those two pieces of advice look like well one again i i don't i'm not here to promote you know kel k Gubney, kel williams but i would grab the millionaire real estate agent book and i would follow that like it's a bible i i, I will tell you that and there's things in there that i like i pay my agents more i wouldn't do certain stuff but there is a roadmap today, unlike when I joined 
that would excel your success faster. Um, so that, that's, that's what I would do. And again, I know many people that are with different companies that read the millionaire real estate. Agent. And I don't even like that name because we're not in it to be a millionaire. Yeah. We want to make oh, good money, but it's the systems. It's the formula. And what it does is you have to, um, multiply the best thing that I ever did was my wife came up with checklists and systems. I'm a crazy sales guy. I love people. I want to do this and that, but I'm running around. I'm not. So when I hired somebody, I hired somebody with the brain of an engineer, somebody who's a different mindset than me, who can organize me. So if you have sales here and you have organizational here, there's nothing that can stop you. So um, hire a, a once you're $2 million in production, Hire a great support person. Any top CEO of a great support person. Um, so your question was two things I would do is I would I would follow successful people. Uh, and, you know that's what I did. But today you can do it so much faster. And um, what's the other thing that I would do? Um, I, yeah, I joined the board of real. I just embraced myself in real estate culture, and I loved it. Thank God. So. I mean, I got involved with the Board of Realtors, so I got to know people. I got involved in um, uh, knowing all the brokers' luncheons, and just, just knowing the real estate, just being out in the real estate community. So um, find a mentor, whether you work on a team or an individual. I don't have any preference for, for that. Um, my goal would be to, listen, there's a lot of agents that work on my team that could have their own team. They work on my team because one and one is three. They don't need me, I don't need them, but together we add up to three. So that works great. If there's someone in your marketplace who's like that, I try to, no, I, as I say, I try to, I always give more than I receive. And that's what I love to do so that I can always look at somebody in the face and know, you know, we, we were doing this thing with Keller called Bold. And one of the um, uh, tests was half glass, half glasses of uh, water. And he said, okay, everybody grab a glass of water and I want you to pour some water into this person's cup and tell them why you're grateful to them and see how fast these cups can, your cups can get empty. And I couldn't believe all the people who I didn't even really know now come to, Mike, when I spoke to you six years ago, you said this to me, it changed my life. Like, I love to give back more than I get. And, and as a result, I have a great life. So, so giving back, again, sounds hokey, but it, it does work. Um, staying positive having high energy. Again, I always say I have more energy in my little finger than most 28 years, year olds have in their old. I already did a hundred pushups today. I'll do some one handed pushups for you right now, man. If I go up on stage for to get these awards, I always do my one handed pushups. Man. <laughs> That's awesome. You gotta have fun. I, you know, like the only time I'm old is when I look in the mirror at myself. But uh, other than that, I'm young. <laughs> yeah. Love it, man. Such powerful stuff. And, and Mike, for, for those that are listening and watching, man, if they want to follow you, check out what you're doing. I mean, you've got a, an amazing website. Maybe they have, you know, we're all real estate agents that are there watching and listening to this podcast. Maybe they have a referral for your area. Maybe they're in your area and want to talk to you about joining your amazing team. Where's the best place to uh, uh, follow you and, and check sure. out what you're doing and maybe get a hold of you? Yeah. A couple of things. It's funny. When I joined Keller, I probably had three to 4,000 private Facebook messages. I responded to everyone. I respond to every phone call, every email, every text, every day. My saying is no matter what. Um, so um, anyway, so I am, my, e uh, my um, website is mccannteam.com, M-C-C-A-N-N-T-E-A-M.com. My text is 215-778. 0901 and my email is mccann at mccannteam.com and you can get me on uh, facebook you can get me on um instagram so funny i'm you know I'm, I, I'm more heavily personally on facebook than instagram i'm on instagram and that's where all the young people today here are more more people my age are on facebook I, I like facebook better i don't know why it just gives me more information but everybody's on so i'm on either one and i'll respond to you <laughs> you know, love it, man. And those that are watching will make it watching or listening wherever you're at, make it super easy. And we'll have all Mike's information right below. So you can just click on that and uh, highly recommend it to check out his website, man. I mean, 
I was on your website before we did the interview and you Thank got you. a killer, killer website. One of the best I've seen. I mean, it's, yeah. it's extremely impressive. So yeah, I invest in the website and then I invest in the SEO to market the website. It's just, you know, it's very important today. Although websites aren't as valuable uh, as they were before. Again, from me getting advanced education outside of my market, I had my website, my first website, it's different than the one today in 1992. And that was before Prudential even had a website. Um, I bought my first, I had a laptop in 89. I paid $4,500 for a laptop in 89. I was ahead of the curve. I always tried to stay ahead of the curve, curve, but once you get super busy, you're too busy to stay way ahead of the curve. So um, that's why I have support people like looking into new things to, 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 to keep me relevant because I'm doing 150 transactions a year. <laughs> but thanks, man. Um, um, so yeah, website's important. Social media is important. Um, we returning every phone call, every email, every day, no matter what is even more important. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And those watching and listening, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation is just the start of delusion. Information isn't power. It's taking that information and taking action on it. That gives you the power to go out there and create the life that you know you want and deserve. And Mike shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you guys today. Take something that you learn and go out there and take immediate action. So again, you can create that life that you know you want and deserve. And Mike, I know how busy you are, man. I truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to be here to share all your awesome, man. with us. It's been a huge honor, my friend. Uh, it's funny, but listening to your blog, I was like, he speaks like me, man. I got to talk to him. And then I got to know this station. I, I love it, man. But the best business in the history of the world, unlimited opportunity, doesn't matter where you came from, who you are, the success stories I could go on that we have grown, not just on my team, in real estate is unbelievable. People come from nothing. So just do it. Yep, 100%. Couldn't agree more, my friend. And thank you again. Okay. Massive honor. Thank you guys for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.